There comes a time when you need to use Windows to do something that Linux just can't do. But unless you're playing games or doing some other type of heavy task, it may not be necessary to install Windows to bare metal. So it's better to install it as a virtual machine than to have it occupying one of your precious SSDs. First thing that you'll want is to obtain a totally legitimate Windows 10 ISO from a totally legitimate Windows 10 ISO provider. And once you have that, we want to head over to VirtualBox, click on New, and type Windows 10 or whatever version of Windows that you're going to be using. And the version should also change down here automatically. Just make sure that it's the same 64-bit or 32-bit, whichever one that you're going to be using. Then we're gonna hit next and change your memory size. I recommend using at least four gigs of RAM if it's gonna be a Windows 10 VM. So I'm gonna crank that right up. Then next, we're going to create a virtual hard disk now. Click create. I'm gonna do it as a VDI virtual disk image. Next, I'm going to change it to be a fixed size. Fixed size has a little bit better performance than dynamically allocating your virtual hard disk space, but if you use fixed size, you won't be able to change the space later. You won't be able to expand it. So just make sure you plan ahead if you're going to use fixed size. Make sure that you know how much space you're going to need in advance. Next, you can change the name of the Windows 10 that you're going to use. You can change where it's going to um, be located. So you can do that here and then change the folder that you want it to be saved into. And you can also crank up or crank down the amount of space that you want for the virtual image, but I'm gonna leave it at 50 gigs. And then we're gonna click create. And now we can go into our settings and I'm going to change a few things here. So first I want to have two processors so that it can essentially function as a dual core or at least a dual thread. I'm gonna go into display, enable 3D acceleration and crank the video memory up to 256 megs. And I'm also going to remove the networking and you'll see why we're going to do that in a little while. It's going to allow us to install it without having to uh, do a certain setting. And of course we wanna add our ISO. Hit okay, and then we're going to start it up. All right, so this is going to load for a little while. Okay, and then it brings us to the language settings. So choose whatever language and input settings that you need. Then we're gonna do install now. So it's gonna ask us for our product key. Just do, I don't have a product key. Or if you do, go ahead and enter it. And then we're gonna select the version. I'm just gonna use Windows 10 Home for this case. Accept the license terms. And I'm gonna do custom, install Windows only advanced. And hit next. And then it's going to start installing Windows. And this part will take a little while, so I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video here. All right, and then once it's done restarting, Windows is going to go ahead and restart. And then just don't press any key here, and it's going to load into the next phase of the Windows installation.
Once Windows is done getting ready, it's going to reboot another time, and then you're going to be on this just a moment screen until Hi there. Cortana loads. I'm Cortana, and I'm here to help. A little sign so, here, first thing we're going to want to do, there, very important, we'll have your PC is ready shut for Cortana up. Because we're not interested in hearing from her. She's going to try to explain to us how Windows works. She's going to try to uh, coax us into talking to her and using some sort of like voice activated setup, but don't fall for her tricks. Just mute her, you know, let her finish doing her spiel here. And then eventually she'll stop running her mouth. And we'll be able to start with the install. So, choose your region. Choose your keyboard layout. Not exactly sure why it makes you go through all of this since we already selected it in the first place, but, you know, it's Windows. What can, what can we expect? So then we're gonna select here, I don't have internet, because remember, we didn't actually connect it to a network and it's going to it's going to again try and trick us and say hey you want to do all of this cool stuff no we don't we want to continue with a limited setup all right so this is the reason why i recommend setting it up without internet is because by default it is going to ask you to basically create a windows account where you have to provide it an email address and you either have to provide it a real email address or you have to go and make one up and if you're gonna use this for a while and you're just gonna use it as a virtual machine having the whole Windows account nonsense is just a hassle but this will let you create an offline account so we're just going to call it uh, let's call it Billy Gates go ahead and hit next and then create a password if you want to or not I'm not going to and uh, no, we're not doing that. Nope, we're not gonna use Cortana and we're gonna change all of this off because all of these settings are spooky. Probably doesn't matter though because there's most likely gonna be some hidden settings in here that we can't change no matter what we do anyway. So when you're done, Cortana's going to you know, talk to you and let you know that she's setting everything up. She's gonna say hi and talk to you like a weirdo. You get all of this nice animation telling you that they're setting windows up. In my opinion, you know, this is just, this is just me talking. I feel like it'd be a little bit better if uh, instead of doing all this nice, cool cinematic stuff, you just contribute that little bit of RAM and that little bit of CPU power that's required to do this into, you know, deploying my system. That'd be a lot better. All right, so after waiting several minutes and not turning off our PC, we have our Windows 10 machine, but you know, it's a little bit small, so I'm gonna go ahead and do guest editions so that we can get a larger resolution going. So you wanna go up to devices and click insert the guest edition CD image, and then click on this little folder here to launch File Explorer, click on this PC, and then you should have the CD drive here. We just wanna click into that and then select the VBox Windows Editions AMD 64. or the 32-bit version if you're uh, you know, doing a 32-bit Windows install. Hit next, next, install. And this is gonna run for a little while. It's gonna ask you, would you like to install this device software? And we're going to want to install it and check the box to always trust software from Oracle Corporation. All right, and then we're gonna go ahead and reboot now. So when this restarts, we should be able to have a full screen inside of Windows 10, or at least full screen eligible. We might have to still manually change the resolution.
All right, and it hasn't set our resolution yet. So let's go into our display settings. Ah, there we go. It's, wait a minute. Huh, that's weird. Maybe I need to open it back up. Huh, for some reason, it's not giving us our settings. Let me try rebooting it again. All right, so rebooting and not opening up the display settings caused it to work. I guess having the display settings open while the resolution is changing automatically just makes Windows too confused and unable to set its resolution properly. But it's here now. I've even got this other weird one here. Like, what is this? It's such an odd resolution. That's not even the right resolution. But that's how to install a Windows 10 virtual machine. See, aren't you glad that you installed this thing on a virtual box image and not actually to your hardware? It's, it's, it's an odd operating system and it's not open source. So nobody truly knows how it works. All right, guys, enjoy the virtual machine. Peace out.